verbal feedback is our main source of feedback. We get it when we're in the classroom. This helps us to build on, challenge, improve and correct the work that we already have and so that we can get it better than we already have it. But sometimes there is a whole class misconception so the teacher will stand at the front and address it with everyone. As Emily has just gone through, verbal feedback is our main source of feedback at Wayne Jaws. It's happening all the time, live in the classroom. However, we do use more traditional forms of written feedback as well, and that tends to be kept to the extended tasks that happen with more formal assessments. In Key Stage 3 Geography, we use a range of assessments throughout the year. These will tend to alternate between short to mid-length questions on an end topic a test that reflects the look and feel of a GCSE style test just so that students have an awareness of it and when they do get to GCSE level it's not something that they completely knew that they've never seen before they feel quite comfortable with that format and then alongside that we'll often do extended written essays as well and these will tend to make a judgment on a global issue such as looking at the impacts of fast fashion or looking at the impacts of deforestation of the rainforest. So this is an example of one of the extended written assessments in geography. This is a report on management of the rainforest. On the left you can see a structure sheet um, that gives students uh, an indication of what they need to put in the various different sections of their essay and um, through the course of Key Stage 3 these will get um, less and less so that students build up their level of independence. On the right you can see a new form of feedback sheet that we have created this year to fit alongside our new feedback and assessment policy at Wayne Jules. Um, what we've done is we've matched the kind of different sections up to the introduction, the human youth paragraph, the sustainable management paragraph, the conclusion, and we're able to tick on a scale how we think the student has done within that essay. Um, the numbers at the top don't stand for anything, they're not grades, it's just a scale format so that students can really clearly visually see what sections they've done particularly well on and which sections that they maybe didn't do as well on. Then underneath there are a range of improvement tasks so that when students get this back they can see okay I need to have a go at putting more evidence into this paragraph and so they'll have time in class to redraft that paragraph and make some improvements based on that feedback they've been given and it's something that students seem to have really engaged well with this year. Uh, I find this feedback sheet very helpful because you can get a rating of 1 to 5 on individual things. Um, this is also better than just getting, say, a 60% score because I can see exactly what I need to improve on and what I did really well. And also with this feedback we can see really clearly what we need to improve on. So say if we did get a mark that we're not so happy with, we can clearly see what we need to do to improve it. So here's an example of Emily's written essay on the rainforest. So you can see you've got um, a bit from her best book where she's had a go at writing this assessment. Feedback sheet, so you can clearly see she's done really well. Um, she could potentially add a little bit more to the human use paragraph. Um, and therefore that's been circled as well for her to have another go at. And she'll be able to refer back to the comments that I've made within the actual essay itself to see how she can make uh, specific improvements to that and on the next slide you'll see where Emily has redrafted that paragraph based on this feedback. This is a teacher guidance sheet for the assessment. Um, students won't see this, this is just going on behind the scenes, but this is, as a department, what we're looking for at the different levels of attainment in terms of lower, middle and higher. And it allows us to keep a record of progress data um, on how that student is getting on uh, specifically against our curriculum that we have put together. And then that information will be used to support generating data for overall reporting purposes.
As you can see from the slide here, this is an example of what it would look like to do a midpoint or final assessment in English. On the left hand side, you have some examples of the things that we would expect you to be including. And then on the right, you can see there is a success criteria in the pink box. This gives examples of things that you would support with your opinions or opinions as facts, emotive language um, and so on. Here you can see how that would look within a student response. You can see at the bottom on the picture on the right hand side, there is emotive language, clear opinion, statistics and sentence types. And the student has gone back through and highlighted in their work where they have met that success criteria. This is a midpoint, so we complete it halfway through the term and it is marked in detail so that students have time to apply that knowledge and learning. You can also see that a, a teacher has given it a what went well and an EBI of a four and a five and the student has written out what that looks like specifically there so that they have clear feedback on areas for them to improve. This is the example of the feedback sheet that students would then receive. Um, on the previous page, we saw that they had a what went well of a four. So therefore, they used emotive language, statistics and clear opinion presented as facts and their EBIs are highlighted next to it. We don't just leave it at that, though. There is then a do it now task, which clearly links directly to their even better if. This is then a task that they will be completing in their time during the lesson so that they are applying that feedback. We also have at the bottom some common areas that the teacher has identified and this one in particular is looking at apostrophes. So we have identified as the whole class we need to ensure we are using apostrophes correctly. There are two examples of when you would use an apostrophe and then underneath we have examples from all the responses where they have made that mistake so students can check if they have done that themselves. This is what it would look like in a final assessed piece So the feedback that students get at the end of the topic in English is this feedback sheet on the right hand side. The teacher has gone through and highlighted the areas that the students has completed well and one area that they could be improving on. And there's a little note there to sort of push the student further and make it specific to him. Um, this is the only feedback they receive for the final assessment as all the learning and interaction with feedback is completed in the midpoint instead. This is what happens behind the scenes then. As you can see on the right, we have the student feedback sheet that you saw in the previous slide that the teacher would have highlighted and they would have used the teacher mark scheme on the left to define whether the student is making less than expected progress, making expected progress or exceeding the expected progress. So this is only seen by the teacher on the left and we use this to then clearly identify the H, M and L band um, for the list of skills that we would be expecting to see at that band in English. And then within that, we grade that as it from a one to three we can then use that data to compare against the information we have from the student's response and get some accurate um, feedback students at key Street obviously use their best books frequently when they're doing assessed pieces of work particularly for more extended pieces of assessed work um, but the journey that we go on with best books is as we move towards key stage four they tend to have more of a focus towards the exam specification. So feedback starts to become more aligned with the exam specifications, with mark schemes, with assessment objectives. On this slide, this is an example of how we use the best books in geography at Key Stage 4. So a student had an exam question on their end of topic test for climate change, only got three marks. In class, what we would have done after that assessment is we would have talked through the paper, talked through what was needed. So you can see that this student has made annotations in a different colour to show her what she needed to add in to get to the full six marks. And then in their best book, um, they have a go at redrafting the question and I can see how they've made progress. So you can see that this student has gone from gaining half marks in that question to getting full marks in the question. When it does come to generating report data, then obviously assessment data has a real importance, uh, particularly as it shows levels of retention, it le shows level of recall, which can highlight understanding. However, it's, it's not the only thing that we use to generate report data. We do also take into account classwork, any homeworks. We also look at class contributions as well. So the report data is a real holistic progress data for that student and will never solely be focused on one or two pieces of work.